Welcome back. You're listening to The Voice of Russia, and now it's Meet the Media with me, Scott Craig, where each week I look at some of the major stories in Russia and invite correspondents from Russian news outlets here in the UK to share their analyses. This week, I'm pleased to have back Alexander Smotrov from RIA Novosti, Margarita Stewart from Argumenti e Facti in Europe. She's also Managing Director of Russian Media Services, and Victor Balagade is from Commerçant UK. Victor, let's just get straight into it. It's obviously election fever in Russia building up to the presidential election on Sunday, isn't it? I mean, that's really the only story in town, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, but at the same time, you don't really feel that it is a fever. At least that's the way I perceive the uh, the current stage and the current state of the election, uh, election campaign. I feel that uh, everything is going very smoothly uh, for the people who are um, supporting Mr. Putin. And um, Mr. Putin was very uh, wise and very careful uh, in the last few months. And he didn't give any he didn't give any chance and any food for people who sit on the internet and make fun of him. Uh, the last time when he spoke about something funny was quoting Kipling's book, uh, the Jungle Book, and calling those people who came out on streets in Moscow bunderlogis. But uh, since then, that was in December. Since then, he didn't give any food to any uh, critics, and that's why I feel that the presidential campaign went very calm, uh, which I think uh, Mr. Putin was looking for. And um, everything is going in his favor, and um, probably, uh, as everybody knows, he'll be a winner. Alexander. Yeah, I was just uh, about to add how the campaign was um, uh, managed and organized. So he always takes a one-day break from his prime ministerial duties to make some kind of rally or um, to visit another city. So, and again, uh, he shows that he's still in charge and this the small breaks for campaigning rather than to make it a full uh, scale campaign without the uh, prime ministerial duties and margarita i mean has he been getting a smooth ride i mean as 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 victor was saying the, the polls are pretty solid things do seem to be going pretty smoothly for putin at this stage don't they if we are talking about the media coverage uh, i also absolutely agree that it's going very smoothly as even too much smoothly on my point of view uh, so if I talk about uh, printing me media, if I am flicking through the newspapers uh, now so over the last few weeks, uh, it's just I have a flashing memories all the time. So I already saw this somewhere in the past. And it's pre precisely I saw this in Soviet Union time. I'm sorry, guys, but it was the situation, very similar situation. If we remember the CS uh, Kommunistische Party, what we say, the Conference of Communist Party, and a massive media coverage there, on those time, you can open any newspaper, and any newspaper in the in Soviet Union, what I guess I give uh, give up the pages and pages and pages for disposal for dispose to the Communist Party program, Communist Party speeches, Communist par Party this, Communist Party that. Just a couple of days ago, I opened one Russian language news uh, newspaper, and I saw, to my horror, five pages of small text of this uh, the, the whole Putin article about we need new economical uh, system. Open this another newspaper, there's three or four pages of we need new political system. We all know that we need it, absolutely. We all agree with that, but do we need all these details? Newspapers, most of the newspapers means for ordinary people. What they want to know, what, when, and how, without all the uh, huge details. But now I have an uh, impression that uh, me, a lot of medias have loving, uh, have, having uh, like uh, competition, who will publish the biggest, uh, the largest uh, <laughs> article, <laughs> forgetting the first and the most important the law of any media, that is uh, the brevity, the soul of the wit and the talent. And I would add for myself, the humanity, <laughs> humanity and, the, and the mercy, do not put also all the things. From my point of view, it is too much coverage for one candidate. We have an, an election on the 4th of, uh, of uh, March. An election is, uh, I assume, is a two or three more uh, candidates. Where is the, the, same, the, the same amount of uh, so, so amount of information about Zyuganov, about Prokhorov? Where are they? Where are their programs? Yeah, it looks like a two-tier campaign, actually, because <clears throat> like Putin campaigning somewhere else and all other candidates campaigning on the other field, and they've got these debates either themselves or with their 
of representatives. And the most interesting um, dialogues and debates are among these people uh, rather than they all involved in it. And this is maybe the uh, downside of this mm -hmm. campaign. And also, again, uh, it lacks visual representation, like concise comparison of programs and manifestos of the candidates, because we are living in 21st centuries and it's long past this big articles like full page mm -hmm. foreign policy article. It should be presented in a much more concise and striking in terms of visual representation. People need some of some just called comparison. They have, so they have to know. It's the only I, uh, so I read uh, that uh, Mikhail Prokhorov is the serious uh, the candidate in British uh, the British uh, media, but uh, why is uh, nothing? Because uh, yeah, as uh, I wish I was aware of uh, all luck to Vladimir Putin. I really agree with him and, uh, and I respect him, but it should be something. It, it would be as yes, anyway. It uh, it would be much more interesting. And I think the biggest disappointment is that Mr. Putin just refused to take part in the live uh, in, in the live discussions between the, all the candidates, and that was a huge disappointment. And of course, uh, Alexander is totally right when saying that uh, it's like uh, it's just like you know. I mean, just imagine putting Manchester United playing in a second league division, and you see all these small teams from uh, local teams from north and south of England playing a monster of let's say Manchester United. So it's it's a very un uneven election, and uh, and even looking at the fact, not I mean. Uh, Miss Stewart was very right by saying the newspapers, but if you look even at the TV, at the first uh, channel, in the in the last two months we had, I think, around six documentaries dedicated to Mr. Putin, and in all of them it was the main idea was that Mr. Putin is the savior of Russia after the 2008 economical crisis. It is thanks to Mr. Putin Russia is feeling well, and so on and so on. So it's the same idea throughout all those six movies, and those are v well done documentaries. One of them is made by BBC, as we know. And, uh, well, of course, they did not uh, portray Mr. Putin there as a savior of Russia in the economical um, crisis. But uh, the, as we've discussed in our last panel, I mean, the, the campaign is almost over. But as you said at the beginning of the program, I don't feel the fever of the campaign. I mean, the thing that strikes me about this this practice of writing article after article after article, I think this, the latest one about is about foreign policy. The thing that strikes me about it is that it's essentially a passive process. So that you know, an, an article is published, the public receives this information, but there's no interplay. There's no debate. There's no inter said. Yeah, there's no interaction. Even if you look at this fabulous video, which uh, three people recorded yesterday, or the day before yesterday, that's Parfion of the famous journalist, and um, Vasya, Vasya Blom of uh, one of the rising stars on the Russian pop scene, and uh, Sabchak, the the lioness of the Moscow society, high society, if you can say so. And the, also at the same time, she's the goddaughter of Mr. Putin. So and um, that video was just very a very humiliating vi video to Mr. Uh, for Mr. Medvedev, where they're just straight accusing him that uh, he's the one who gave hope to the Russian society four years ago, but now he's leaving his presidential post, and uh, the country is just left in oblivion, and they are they are very much disappointed about uh, about what he did uh, in these four years. So and in that song they are mentioning that yes, you've introduced the Twitter, yes, you are always on Twitter, but it's only one way. Ticket. I mean, you are sending the message to the country, but when the country is saying something back, you are not replying to it. You are just sharing your thoughts and so on. On the question of Medvedev's involvement, uh, and again, probably it's a big illusion in the Russian society that it was him who gave hope to Russia or to the Russians. Uh, I think it was them themselves who wanted to see this hope uh, represented by him. And Interestingly, uh, also, that he's not taking part actively, at least, in Putin's campaign. He's not supporting him, but he's not opposing uh, him. And now it's like a parallel tracks for them at the moment. He endorsed him in September, but since then, and especially after the December Duma elections, Medvedev was uh, not a part of Putin's campaign. And what do you think we can infer from that? You can either draw a conclusion that uh, he um, thinks he has endorsed Putin and that's it. He doesn't want to be involved and associated too much with this, especially in the light of this protest and all sorts of things. Either it was just an agreement between them that Medvedev would continue as president for the last remaining months and that's it. He's not needed for the campaign. 
there does seem to be a lack of excitement around this this campaign. Would you say that's fair, Margarita? It is very different. It is, uh, was a lot of people involved there. It's uh, a lot of action. But uh, like we said, this, uh, the action just like uh, what uh, so what we said, Nastaroni, just for, from only one side. It's nothing from uh, from another. It uh, should be two ways straight here. And do you think that is going to change? I mean, the fact is there has been, uh, you know, the opposition movement is stronger than it has been in the past. There have been all of the protests. Don't there have to be some adjustments made to accommodate the, the views of the opposition? I really hope that it will change, uh, but uh, I, I just read a few, a few, uh, days, a few days ago that uh, uh, and uh, so, but I think Dmitry Medvedev invited in his office the opposition, so for, uh, this future, op the future opposition uh, that uh, because of a big coalition. Uh, and I'm afraid that it will not be just uh, just like a pet uh, so opposition. Well, you have to mention, and you shouldn't forget that there is this new laws which were passed in the State Duma, and uh, this is a big uh, step forward. Even Mr. Khodorkovsky from prison uh, mentioned that this is a big step forward. I'm not saying, um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying this is something a huge progress uh, where Russia hasn't. The laws on just to be clear, the laws are making it easier to register political. Exactly. Parties. Yeah. The laws I'm talking about is uh, that now you need only 500 people to start a new party, not 40,000. I think. You you don't need to collect the signatures uh, if you want to take part in a political campaign and so on and so on. So anyway, basically, the laws which are easing the political process in Russia. And um, uh, and as I say, that this is not where Russia hasn't been already. Russia has passed that stage, but unfortunately, due to one personality, the step was taken back. I really like the way Mr. Berezovsky put it to uh, last week in the London School of Economics during his speech. He said that in the 90s, Mr. Gorbachev was the, uh, was the epitome of conservatism, and Mr. Yeltsin is, was the epitome of democracy and progress. But now, in uh, 20 years have passed, now it is Mr. Gorbachev is the epitome of democracy and progress. So it means that the Russia, I mean, Russia as a country, or the state of democracy, or the state of political uh, society in the country went back almost over than more than 20 years uh, ago. So now it is good that uh, these laws were passed and I think that will help uh, in future for the Russians to, um, to start a to start a political life in the country where there'll be different parties the parties won't be orchestrated from kremlin and there'll be and there'll be competition there'll be a political competition that's what exactly what the but uh, since then that was in december since then he didn't give any food to any uh, critics and that's why i feel that the presidential campaign went very calm uh, which i think uh, mr putin was looking for and um, everything is going in his favor and um, probably uh, as everybody knows he be a winner. Alexander. Yeah, I was just uh, about to add how the campaign was. Um, uh, Sand UK. Victor, let's just get straight into it. It's obviously election fever in Russia building up to the presidential election on Sunday, isn't it? I mean, that's really the only story in town, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, but at the same time, you don't really feel that it is a fever. At least that's the way I perceive the uh, the current stage and the current state of the uh, election, uh, election campaign. I feel that uh, everything is going very smoothly uh, for the people. Welcome back. You're listening to The Voice of Russia. And now it's Meet the Media with me, Scott Craig, where each week I look at some of the major stories in Russia and invite correspondents from Russian news outlets here in the UK to share their analyses. This week, I'm pleased to have back Alexander Smotrov from RIA Novosti, Margarita Stewart from Argumenti e Facti in Europe. She's also Managing Director of Russian Media Services. And Viktor Balagade is from Com ...who are um, supporting Mr. Putin. And um, Mr. Putin was very uh, wise and very careful uh, in the last few months. And he didn't give any he didn't give any chance and any food for people who sit on the internet and make fun of him. Uh, the last time when he spoke about something funny was quoting Kipling's book, uh, the Jungle Book, and calling those people who came out on streets in Moscow bunderlogis. Managed and organized, so he always takes a one day break from his prime ministerial duties to make some kind of rally or um, to visit another city. So and again uh, he shows that he's still in charge and this the small breaks for campaigning rather than to make it a full uh, scale campaign without the prime ministerial duties and margarita i mean has he been getting